Alrighty, so I would like to get started right away here. Um, are we on back there? Is the speaker working there, Travis? Can you hear me? No? You can hear me. I'll use my my thunder my thunder voice. Yes. I think I do have to get that battery fixed in there. Okay, well anyways, um, so because we're in for Wednesday for this test, um, I would like to go through this sort of study checklist. Which is good. We'll start with that. And you will remember that um, I strongly suggested that you do questions, problems, 7, 8, 9, where our friend Kyle is flying a helicopter. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time going through those. We go to this, and we need as much time as it can to work. I have marked all the pre tests that were headed in, but there are several that have yet to come in. So I hope you were got the hit over the weekend and we're working on some. I have a third one here. Um, if you want, I'm going to make this one kind of optional because we are running out of time, but you can certainly use it as a little check um, to see where you're at. So let's begin by starting with this. Okay, so these, this is what you need to be able to do. Define the gravitational field qualitatively as a region of space around a mass or another point mass string support. So qualitatively means in words. So basically all they're doing there is they're saying the definition of a gravitational field is a region of space around a mass or another point strength a force. So that's what it's defined as. You just need to know that every object has a gravitational field. Really, right? The, the region around any object is referred to as a gravitational field. Diagram the Earth's gravitational field using lines of force. So you need to be able to draw this diagram. I'm sure this will challenge many of you. It's very tricky. Sarcasm font. And you draw that picture. Maybe, maybe you should be listening. Just thinking, maybe. Similarities and differences, right? So, similarities, mass is related to, well, mass is really how much stuff there is, right? How many atoms is broken? I think it might be stuff. Um, whereas weight is a weight is a force. Now, so they're different. They have different units, right? They have different units. One of the similarities in is they're related to. They're both proportional to how many atoms there are, right? Like the more atoms an object has, the more mass they have, and the more atoms you have, the more weight you have, right? I'm not really. Any of those aren't particularly. Um, important, I guess you could say. What about describe qualitatively and quantitatively apparent weight changes in vertically accelerating systems? So that means elevators. Qualitatively means with words. Like if I asked you what's the weather like, you'd say it's nice. That's qualitative. If you said it's minus four, that's quantitative. So Describe qualitative and apparent weight change in vertically accelerating systems. If I put uh, man wearing suspenders and dad jeans, the dad pants, in an elevator and I accelerate him up, where does he weigh more? The bottom, right? He weighs more at the bottom because he's accelerating. He weighs less at the top because he's slowing down. So just that more and less thing. And then quantitatively means what? With a number, right? So I would ask you, what is the actual number. What is his apparent weight? How much does he weigh, appear to weigh at the bottom? Yes, thank you so much. Okay, yeah, inserting an image to Word. Done. All right, what about uh, derive acceleration to gravity from free fall and Newton's law? So you know Newton's law. To derive means to come up with a formula. So you know F equals MA. You know that the acceleration is equal to gravity. So all we do there is we take G and put it in for A. And what do we get? We get weight force is equal to mass times gravity. That is a form of the derivation. I am not going to ask you to do that on a test. 
You just need to be able to use FWs with MD. Okay. Uh, okay. There's a lot of these that are not really testable outcomes, to be perfectly honest. Perform an experiment to calculate G near the surface of the Earth. Did we do that? Did we drop the G balls onto the yoga mats? Yep. We sure did. Check. Well, did you? Not gonna. Not. We all. No. Already done. Already done. Should have been. Now, what about this one? Solve free for all problems. Yeah, that's gonna be on the test. Lots of that. Okay, Callan. I'm still talking about the test coming up, so you should listen so you know what's going to be on. Wait. Solve all free fall problems. Plenty of those. Will there be Kyle flying a helicopter? Yep. Yes. Will his name be Kyle? No. no. That's the only change I'm going to make. I may change the helicopter. Does it matter that it's a helicopter? Okay, what about, oh, this is a bunch of stuff from all um, um, Yeah, this is all from the Lord here. Describe terminal velocity both qualitatively and quantitatively. So qualitatively means with words. So what is terminal velocity? It's as fast as you can fall. When does terminal velocity happen? When the forces are? Equal. Equal. When the force of friction is equal to the uh, force of gravity. Right? When the force of friction is equal to the force of gravity. And quantitatively, it might be a word problem where I might say, you know, uh, Kylie jumped out of the helicopter. Kylie. Kaylee jumped out of the helicopter that Kyle's been flying. And she reaches, she accelerates at minus 9.8 for 14 seconds before she reaches terminal velocity. What is her terminal velocity? Zero. What's that zero? 14 times minus 9.8. Quantitatively. It is. It's the, it's the fastest you can go. Okay. Define the coefficient of friction mu as the ratio of the force of friction and the normal force. So in other words, you need to know this formula. FF over FN. The coefficient of friction is the ratio of the force of friction and the normal force, F half over Fn. It has no units. It's newtons over newtons, right? Distinguish between static and kinetic friction. What is static friction? Yeah, at rest. Kinetic friction is when you are sliding, yes, or moving, right? Static is always more. Oh, and by the way, remember that coefficient of friction is always less than 1, right? Mu is the coefficient of friction. FF over Fn. Comparing the effects of the normal force materials of all of surface area and the speed on the force of friction. Well, as you increase the normal force, what happens to friction? It increases, right? The more the more you're pushing down, the more the table has to push up, the greater the friction force. What about the materials involved? Well, things that are really smooth, right? Have low friction. I mean, that's just common sense. Things that are really smooth have low friction. Did you say that things that have two smooth? That, that can happen when you, they become so smooth you can't. You can actually you get molecular attraction, like where the molecules are attracted to each other, because they're now so close together. Um, surface area really only is a factor in um, air resistance, right? Like if you drop a wide sheet like this, right, down a lot of air resistance, right? Where if it's coupled up, low air resistance. Um, surface area, though, when you're talking about sliding objects like textbooks. I went through this. Right? So books that are flat have just as much friction as books that are on their spine. Right? The area doesn't matter. It's only the weight works matter. 
Um, speed. Again, air resistance, when something's traveling really fast, it has a lot of air resistance. But when something's just sliding, is speed a factor at all in, in friction? Not that I know of. Solve problems with the coefficient of friction for objects on a horizontal surface. So in other words, you've got applied force, you've got friction force, but you've got some mu value, right? So I'm not just giving you FF, I'm giving you a mu value. That may also be true for um, forces at an angle. And we, we spent some time on Friday doing that, right? Hopefully you did some practice over the weekend. Good. That's what you need to do. Well, all weekend, like 24 hours, Travis? Yeah. Yeah? Saturday, Friday, 9. Oh. Five to nine. Five to nine? What about that four to five? Like five o'clock in the afternoon to nine o'clock at night? So that's four hours now. Saturday, four to eleven. And then Sunday, one to five, and then I have my Christmas morning. Wow. That's a lot of work. Where are you working, man? Where are you working there, Travis? Where are you working? Well, then you better use today's time wisely, right? Okay, so reading number seven here in that very first problem pack. Kyle flying a helicopter when he drops a bag. When the bag has fallen two seconds, what is the bag's velocity? Okay, so we got this helicopter. You do have it. You do. Okay, so once again, here is Kyle in his rectangular helicopter with a really bad set of propellers. Okay, what is the bag's velocity? How far has the bag fallen? So it doesn't say so, so you can only assume that the helicopter is hovering, which means that the initial velocity of this bag or whatever is being dropped is zero. zero. When the bag is falling two seconds, what is the bag's velocity? So you're going to write A equals delta V over delta T minus 9.8 is equal to delta V over 2, which makes the change in velocity minus 19.6. So the velocity changes by minus 19.6. But because it starts at 0, Right, minus 19.6 equals VF. The vo my initial velocity would be zero, right? So it just like disappears. So what is the final velocity? Minus 19.6, right? Pretty straightforward. How far has the bag fallen? To know how far, you need the average velocity because the average velocity is the one in the v bar equals d over t formula so you got to find average zero plus minus 19.6 all over two and now i'm going to divide by two. Oh, shouldn't need a calculator minus 9.8 that's the average velocity kaylee i'm showing you how to do this right excellent now what? Now find V bar equals D over T, so minus 9.8, and I have a funny feeling I'm going to end up multiplying by 2 again, and so I fall 19.6 meters, right? Relatively straightforward. Okay, can I move on to number eight now? Wait a second, okay. okay. Question number eight. This time, Kyle is flying the same helicopter, but it's rising at five meters per second. Noah, not now. People need to be able to hear, too. Okay, so it's rising. So that means that the initial velocity of the bag is also plus five. So those of us on the ground, 
are going to see the helicopter rising. And what are you going to actually see this bag or whatever he's dropping do? You're actually going to see it go up and down, aren't you? From your reference point, you're going to see it going up and down. From the reference point of the helicopter, they're just going to see it going down. Okay, guess what? The steps are exactly the same. A equals delta V over delta T minus 9.8 is equal to delta V over 2, and the change in velocity is minus 19.6 meters per second. So does that mean the final velocity is minus 19.6? No. no, it does not. How come? Because delta V is not the same as any other V. Minus 19.6, find the final velocity when the initial is plus 5. So minus 5. And when that goes to the other side, it becomes plus, right? So 5 minus 19.6 or minus 14.6 meters per second. It's going slower. How come? Because it spent some time doing what? Going up and slowing down. It's only going minus 14.6. And now when you go V bar is equal to VI plus VF all over 2, now your VI is minus 14.6. And your delta V is still minus 19.6. And now you've got a harder problem to solve. Oh, 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 what did I do wrong? I, what did I do wrong? Yeah, I already got V. I need to do this, right? This is what I need to do. VI, I got a little ahead of myself. Good thing I'm using a pencil on a carrying. The VI is, oh, my 5, right? That's what I did wrong. My VI is 5, and my VF is minus 14.6, all divided by 2. So 5 minus 14.6 is negative 9.8 divided by 2, negative 4.9. It averaged negative 4.9. 5, well it's 5 plus minus 14.6. Okay, so now you're going to go V bar equals D over T. So you got your V bar of minus 4.9, D over still 2 seconds. So this thing only falls, actually. 4.8, T? Okay. I don't have a calculator here. So 4.8. Okay. Oh, yes, I think you're right. Yeah. So this time here, this time here, the bag only falls how far? It only falls 9.6 compared to before, which when it was? 19.6. How come it falls less? Because it spends time going up. However, I think part C, how far below the helicopter is the bag? Okay, watch closely. Here's where it starts. How far does it fall? 9.6. But in the meantime, the helicopter's doing what? How far does the helicopter go up? V bar equals D over T. How fast is the helicopter rising? 5 for 2 seconds, which is a distance of 10 meters. And guess what? How far below the bag? How far below the helicopter is the bag? 19.6. 9.6 down, 10 up. It says how far below. So you're going to have to add them like how far is it from there to there if that is 10 and that is minus 9.6 that distance there is 19.6 which is exactly the same as it was even though the helicopter wasn't moving interestingly enough
Why am I putting a big star beside it? Because you better be able to do those, and you better understand how those work. Did you do number nine? I think you should do number nine right now. I'm going to go do attendance. You try number nine. Kyle's, Kyle's helicopter is now descending at five. What's his initial velocity? Minus five. Go ahead and do number nine right now. Give me a second, John. Because I want to know what it is. What's the same throughout? Okay, so you should have found out. I'm just doing part A here. Just watch. This is this is how that's how fast it should take you to do that question. And if it if you can't do it in that amount of time, you haven't done enough practice. You have to take physics home. You have to practice. It's the only way. Okay, you will notice here. You will notice here, this hasn't changed. The delta V is minus 19.6. Just add them like it's been every single time that I've done it. Adam, did we not do that over here where we multiplied by 2? Minus 19.6, which I then substitute in delta V over here. And the only difference is now the initial velocity is negative 5. Watch your signs. It's subtract negative 5, which becomes plus 5. And when that plus 5 goes to the other side, it becomes negative, and you get VF is minus 24.6. Then V bar equals VI plus VF over 2. The initial velocity was minus 5. The final is plus minus 24.6 all over 2. So that's minus 29.6. So your average is minus 14 points. Someone help me out here. Oh, 14.8? Yes, 14.8. Meters per second, right? So the how far has the bag fallen? V bar equals D over T. The average is this new value of minus 14.8 times 2. How far has the bag fallen? 29.6 meters. But because, right, so the bag has fallen 29.6, but the helicopter also drops. Why does the helicopter drop? Because it's got a... The average velocity of minus 5, and how far does it drop? Minus 5, D over T, oh, 2. How far does the helicopter, Kelly, please. The helicopter drops minus 10. So 29.6 down, this is a 10. How far apart are they? Again. 19.6 meters. The bag and the helicopter are always 19.6 meters apart, regardless of whether it's hovering, going up, going down. Because the gravity, what's the same throughout? The 9.8. And things are just relative to each other. The acceleration is minus 9.8. That's what's common to all of these. Ah. Okay. Done. So, you don't have a lot of time, I understand, okay? I would really like pre-tests 
one and three gets two hand it in. You had all weekend to do it. That's what I wanted you to do. Easy button broken. You're going to have to do it the hard way. Get it done. Here is pretest number three if you're interested. Take me off. Okay, I'm going to yell out people's names and only pretests. Oh, you know.